hello wonderful people yeah welcome back to my channel thank you for clicking on this video so today i want to show you how to make shoulder dad busia blouse okay and uh, this will be with sweetheart neck so in my i've given a video actually on this channel on how to make shoulder dad busia but i want to show you a different method which is also very very easy okay so we'll be drafting directly on our fabric and trust me at the end of the video you'll be glad you watched this video so if you're new to this channel i say a very big welcome to you join this wonderful family by clicking on the subscribe button it is actually free okay it is okay it is free just hit on the subscribe button to be part of this wonderful family and turn on the bell beside it turn all notifications so that whenever i upload a new video you'll be among those that be notified so thank you for doing that so without wasting too much time we would go ahead to draft our shoulder that booster okay so i would mark directly on my fabric that is i will mark on the lining piece before transferring to the main fabric so the measurements will be needing for the vertical measurement, you'll be needing the length of the blouse, so it's a full blouse, and the, the bust point, under bust point, waist, and the hip, okay? So depending on where the blouse will be getting to. So for the horizontal measurement, you need the shoulder measurement, the bust, circumference, the bust pan, that is from one nipple to the other. They will also need the under bust, circumference, the waist, and definitely the circumference um, of the length. That is where the blouse will be getting to. Okay. So now let's go ahead and cut. So I'll be cutting on the lining fabric. Then transfer to the main fabric. So I'll put this aside. So to cut, I would cut the front piece before cutting the back. So I'll place my fabric on fold. And to fold, I would fold using the biggest measurement. Okay. So in this case, the biggest measurement is around the hip because it's a full blouse. So at that point, I have 41 inches. So I'll divide that by four, then add six inches. So this six inches is for that allowance and seam allowance. So the six inches covers up for all the allowance that I'll be taking. Okay, so I would fold based on that. That is the fullest measurement divided by four plus six inches that is at least six inches okay so that is how i would fold my fabric so this is how i would measure it so in that case what i have 41 divided by 4 is 10.25 plus 6 that would be 16.25 so i can actually mark at 16.5 okay so i'll measure 16.5 and I'll place my fabric on fold at that point. So that is it. So if you have to work with um, a large amount of fabric, you can just cut out the piece you need. Okay, the piece you need by just placing it on fold, you take the width and you take the length. Okay, so for me, the width I said is 16.5. I have to still make sure that I have it here. So I still need to fold a little bit to get that so it's, it's at 17 now it's still okay so i'll just pin it down there so that it doesn't move from that point so i would also take the length of the blouse plus hemming allowance okay i've always advised that when you're making a boost here because of the curves you have to join always add allowance always add extra allowance at the lower side so if, for example, your length is 18, you can take like 19 or 20 inches. You can just add two inches extra. Okay, so your hemming allowance is included, an allowance for trimming off in case that you don't have even edge after joining. So in this case, the length of the blouse is 24 inches. So I would add two inches more. That is 26, okay? So I would mark at 26 inches. Then I'll cut it off and just work with that. 
So this is it. So I'm just repeating the mark so that I can actually draw a straight line and cut it off. So now I'll cut this out and, and leaving what I need, okay? So to make it easy for you, just cut out what you need from the full fabric. So this is what I have to work with. So actually I'm supposed to also add one inch more because of the shoulder that um, shoulder seam allowance. So thank God I added two inches. So I would work with that from here, okay? So what I usually do at the top here, I mark one inch, okay? So that to be for our shoulder seam allowance because you need to create allowance to join the back and the front. So this will um, this would do so also take note of that please when cutting your fabric so you can actually take three inches at the lower part to include this okay so having marked this this is now a shoulder line okay so from the shoulder line i'll place the vertical measurements so the first vertical measurement to we'll place here now is the bust point so the bust point is at 11 inches then I'll place the under bust point, which is at 14 inches, and the waist point, which is at 17, and the full length of the blouse, which is at 24. So I'm just using the whole or the remaining as the full length of the blouse. So here I will repeat the point because I want to draw lines, okay? So I would just repeat the same mark I made here. To enable me draw straight line so this is the boss point this is the under boss point and this is the waist okay so I hope this is clear so I have it here, the bust point, the under bust point, and the waist point, okay? So having done this now, I'll place the shoulder measurement on this line. So the shoulder measurement here is 14 inches. Divide by 2, that is 7 inches. Then I'll add half inch to it, okay? So you see the reason we are adding half inch. This time around, it's not for the sleeve, but for the shoulder, that's allowance, okay? So the... Um, shoulder measurement is at 7 but I'll add half inch so I'll mark at 7.5 okay having done this now I would also mark my neck line so in this case I'm using a neck width of 3.5 so you can take whatever neck width you want how wide you want the neckline to be then for the depth I would use 5.5 okay I would use okay let me use six inches for the depth okay so at this part i would still mark my 3.5 so that i can have it aligning so i'll just mark it so this is my neckline so in this neckline now i'll create the sweetheart neck okay so to make the sweetheart neck i'll mark the midpoint of this line so this is six inches the midpoint is at three inches so by the time i mark the midpoint i'll then make a curve from this point to this point that is outer uh, that is outward outward curve okay so you can actually do this with your french curve just connect it this way So I'll place my French curve like this, connecting from this point to this point, so that I can draw my sweetheart neck line, okay? So this is it, okay? So this is it. Just mark the midpoint, then you make a curve here. So, and actually, depending on what you want, if you want the curve to be a bit higher, you can do that, okay? So, 
Having done this now, the next thing is to mark the boss span. That is the measurement between one nipple to the other, divided by two. So in this case, it is four inches. But I'll add half inch because we'll be joining the center piece to the side piece with a half inch, okay? So instead of marking at four inches, I'll mark at 4.5. So this is the boss span. So I'll mark it all the way down. And I would connect. So let me use a longer ruler. So here it is, okay? So this is my boss pan. So after doing this now, I would come to the shoulder line, okay? From this point where I marked the shoulder measurement, I would take two inches. Now, this two inches is okay for all bust size, okay? The two inches here is okay. It's for the shoulder that is okay for all bust size. So by the time you have marked the two inches, connect it to this bust point, like so. You connect from the actual shoulder measurement you took, that is the shoulder measurement, plus half inch you connect it to the boss point from this other measurement as well you connect to the boss point so just connect it this way connect it like so and you also connect the other one to the boss point as well so this is it so having done this now you come to this other side at the under busts at the under bust point you mark two inches on this side so this two inches is also okay for all bust sizes unless your bust is very very small then you can take one inch on this side okay so for from the uh, bust 36 and above two inches is okay on this side so you mark it all the way down And on this side, you mark half inch. The half inch is also good for all bust size. So you just to shape it, okay? So that this lower side uh, under the bust would have that fitting. So having done this now, you connect from here to the bust point. But first of all, just match this up. Connect this with straight line. So now you would make a curve to the boss point. So depending on the size of your boss, make this make it curvy here. If you if you're very busty, make sure you create a very deep curve here, okay? So that it would accommodate the bust. So just curve it. You can actually do that with your free hand to create more room. So just create more room. For the bust okay so i'll work with the outer the other line the other curve so having done this now you smoothing this curve just smoothing it because you don't want this point to be sharp so you just make a nice curve at this area now just make a nice curve okay and you see what we have here so this is the bust area okay that is, this is the curve for the bust so you just curve it nicely and this would accommodate the boss by the time we place the boss circumference okay so by the time you have done this also connect this one as well to the boss point connect this side as well to the boss point okay so this is it now by the time you have gotten to this the next thing to do is to cover up this that because we want to place now, the, because by the time we cut out this um, dart here, our shoulder will be shorter than what it is expected to be. So you have to cover up or take away this dart. And by doing so, uh, in order to do so, mark half inch on this side. 
okay so this half inch is actually what you'll be using to join this side to this other side on this other side that's where you mark half inch then you match them up so as to you know assume that you have stitched the the, the dots that is you have cut off the dash and you have stitched it so i'll just hold it with my pin so i hope this is clear let me take it again on this side you mark half inch inward and on this side you mark half inch outward so this half inch is what the the, the seam allowance you need for joining the center piece to the side piece okay so like we want to like take away the dot so that we can place the actual shoulder measurement so from the half inch you marked here match it up to the other half inch and you pin it down okay so we have closed up the dot so that's what it simply means we have closed up the dot now we can place our shoulder measurement again so from this point now you mark the shoulder measurement again so it is seven inches like i said and because i'll be adding sleeve i would add half inch for joining the bodies to the sleeve so i would mark at this point okay so by the time you mark at this point remember remember that our shoulder is not straight it is slanty so we have to create that shoulder slope okay so come down here by one inch and we we'll connect it to the neck width so this is the shoulder slope so just go this way so go this way like this okay so having done this now we would place the armhole okay so we we'll have to mark our armhole depth and mark the armhole so remember to place your armhole you have to mark from the shoulder slope okay so the armhole depth in this case is eight inches so from this shoulder slope now i would mark my eight inches okay so this is it and I would connect it, okay? So let me take that again. So this is where I have it, I mark it, and I would connect it. So having done that, I'll just mark it straight here. Okay, so this line now is now my chest line or upper bust line. So when you have created the armhole depth, the line here now is your upper bust line. And that is where you place your bust circumference to create your armhole curve. Okay, so at this point now, I would mark the bust circumference. Remember that this dart is being taken away. So you just take it down like this, okay? And you place your bust circumference divided by 4. So the bust circumference divided by four in this case is nine inches. Okay, so actually you need to be careful in this um, at this stage. You need to be careful at this stage. So you can actually work with your pin. Okay, so I have it down, and now mark my bust circumference divided by four. Okay, so this is actually where it is plus the dots. You need to add the dart allowance because you're cutting off this dart. So we have uh, about half inch there. So I'll mark it. Okay. So that is it. Now I would also add my seam allowance. So I'll be using allowance of 2.5 inches. Okay. So this allowance I'm adding here is because I need some allowance to turn the lining in. Okay. So by the time I'm done turning the lining, whatever will be left with my will be my seam allowance. So I'm using two. 0.5 inches so i would mark it okay now i can create my armhole curve so to create the armhole curve i would measure this line this armhole depth line and mark the midpoint so the midpoint is at four and i'll come in by half inch okay so this is to eliminate too much fabric at the armhole area so by the time i come in by half inch i'll connect that to this point So this is it. And from here, I would make my armhole curve. So I'll just connect from this point to this point. And this is my armhole curve. So this is the armhole curve. 
okay so now i would also place the shoulder seam allowance because we'll be joining the front to the back if you just join if you don't add shoulder seam allowance by the time you join you'll be reducing your armhole depth and your neckline so i add half inch i usually add half inch at this top for the shoulder seam allowance so by the time you add half inch from this side you add half inch from the neckline area you connect it like so so you just connect it okay so that is it for this area so you can actually um cut it the way it is and cut off the dart or you can open it up and smoothen it okay you can open it up and you just follow the line the way it is just mark it like so this is the actual shoulder and this is the shoulder seam allowance so this is it half inch okay so you connect it as well so by the time we cut off the dart we'll be left with this and this okay so i just hope this is clear so at this area now we would mark we have taken our bus circumference at this point so it covers up for this bus um, area as well so at the under bus i'll place the under bus circumference just like what i did here i can decide to cover the darts and they take my measurement but no need for that i can place my measurement then replace the dart okay that is the whatever i'll be cutting out from here i would surely replace it on this side so now the bus second the under bus circumference is 32 32 inches divided by four that is eight inches so this is it i'll mark it remember i took two inches on this side and half inch on this side that is 2.5 inches so i would replace the that and i would add my seam allowance which is 2.5 inches and here it is okay and this is the other one so at the waist the waist circumference divided by four is 8.5 i'll just mark it slightly Replace my 2.5 inches that allowance and add my 2.5 inches seam allowance. And this is the major mark. So, okay. Then at the lower part, which is where I placing the where I'm placing the hip circumference. So that is 10.25. 10.25 plus the 2.5 inches and um, that and 2.5 inches seam allowance okay so i'm taking this much for the seam allowance like i explained because of the lining by the time you're done turning with your lining what to be left for your seam allowance wouldn't be that much again so we have it here the next thing is to just connect so connect from this point to this point and like so So the your outcome will depend on the measurement you are using. Okay, so whatever you whatever measurement you are using, that is what you would get. Okay, so this is it here. This is what I have here. Now I'll go ahead and cut. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut. I'm cutting out these darts. I'm cutting out these darts. So this is going off. This is going off and all this side they are going off so let me go ahead and cut it So this is our shoulder dart bustier pattern. Okay, so be joining it this way, like so, and this way, okay? So I would notch the boss points. Then I would use this to cut on my main fabric, okay? So it's very important to notch your boss point. It will help you when you are joining the panels together. So you notch your boss point. 
so now i would go ahead to cut the back so the back panel is just um waste that okay the that at the back is just waste that but if you want to still have shoulder that at the back what you simply do is just eliminate this bust cup by bringing this together in this way you have eliminated the bust cup okay by the time you do this you just cut this part um, the pattern the way it is okay and you create your shoulder that for the back it, this is just what it will look like because at the back there is no bust so by the time you have em eliminated this bust cup by bringing this point to meet this point like so you have eliminated the bust cup so you just cut what you have here and um, create your shoulder that for the back and it will match up with the front okay so that is it then for the back armhole it will not be as deep as the front armhole so the half inch I came in here I would come out for the back so let me just cut the back so i have folded my fabric to get the back and i marked out 1.5 inches for zipper allowance okay so this is the zipper allowance this is the zipper allowance okay so i use 1.5 because by the time i sew in the lining at that part what would be left if I had used one inch would not be up to one inch anymore. So I use 1.5. So by the time I use half inch to take in the lining, one inch will be left for the zipper allowance. So having done that, I will then place my front pattern this way. And I would also place this side pattern, but I would take away the um, bust cup. So like I explained earlier, just take it away by... You know hiding it underneath this one but make sure you are matching up your points like so okay it has to match up so your underboss point has to match up and this is it okay and your boss point has to match up as well so you can just pin it at that point so it doesn't move so just match it up this way and now you would add your allowance for the back that you can see i've closed up the that here so since i'll be using waist that i'll just add one inch at this side for my waist that just i'm just adding one inch to my measurements so that by the time i sew in my that um what will be left would be the actual measurement okay so this is it i'll just add one inch at the side here so that will be the allowance for the dart so i'll just connect it then for the armhole remember i came in by half inch at this mid point of the armhole so i would still come out by that half inch because the back is not as deep as the front so i'll bring back the half inch i took away okay then i'll create the armhole by just connecting it like so and matching it up to this side because it has to match up Okay, just connect it, and this is the back arm hole. Then for the back neckline, the back neckline depends on what you want. So the front is the sweetheart, so the back can also be sweetheart. So I will use the same neckline I have for the front for the back. So I'll just go ahead now and cut out what I have here. Okay. So you cut it all the way to the zipper allowance. So you cut the neckline all the way to the zipper allowance and you have it there. So I'll take out the front and create the dart for the back. So this is the back panel. 
So before removing this one, you can mark the bust point, the under bust point and the waist, okay? This would help in creating the darts. So now I will just mark it. So this is the bust point. This is the under bust point. And this is the waist, okay? And at this armhole part, we have the... We have the upper bust point, remember? So this is the upper bust point. That is where the back dart will get to, okay? And the two inches before the waist. So now I would mark the bust pan. So start from here, we mark the bust pan. Remember the same measurement I used for the front is what I will use for the back, 4.5. Okay, so we would also mark it at the hip, but the dart would not get to the hip. So this is it. So I'll measure two inches from the hip. That is where the dart will get to. This is where the dart will get to. So on this waist point, remember this is the waist. This is the waist, okay? On this waist point, I'll take half inch on both sides. Half inch on this side and half inch on this other side. Okay, so this is it. Half inch on this side and half inch on this other side. Now I'll connect it to this um, upper boss point or chest line. I'll just connect it this way. Like so. And I'll connect it like so. Okay. And like so. And like so. So this is it, okay? So this is our dart. So this one inch, I'm taking off for the dart here. Half inch here and half inch here. Remember, I've added it at this side, okay? So by the time we stitch the, the, the dart, we will still have the allowance. So this dart now, I would replace it at the other side. So to do that, you can simply use your pin. Just place your pin here, and where you have it at this other side, you mark it, okay? And at the waist, you mark it. And at the this point here, you also mark it. So that when you turn to this side, you have it. Now I can just draw my line. So this is it, okay? So remember that I took my bust pan from after the zipper. So it's from here you measure your bust pan from after the zipper, okay? So that is the line. So at this point now, the waist point, I'll take my half inch on this side and half inch on this other side. Then I'll connect it. Connect it to the top like so, and connect it like so, and to this lower point as well. Connect it like so. And like so, okay? So this is my dart for this other side. And by the time I open it up, We'll have it like this, okay? So you can see the darts. So that is it. So you can actually mark it very well. Because this side looks wider than this side. Okay? 
So when you're stitching it, the main focus is on this side. By the time you just fold it like this, then you stitch like so. Okay? So this is it for the back. This is it for the back. So I'll go ahead and open up the zipper area. Then use this to cut on the main fabric. Okay? So I've also cut out on the main fabric, as you can see. And I also notched the bust point. So here I have my ST. I'll be ironing the ST to read as interfacing, okay? So that it will be a bit, it will add some thickness to the fabric. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll be ironing it just to the main fabric, leaving the lining, okay? So let me do that. So this is my ST. The area, the part that is uh, rough is the, the sticky side. When you, you know, place heat on it, it sticks to the fabric. So this is the interfacing I'll be using. So I'll just place my main fabric like so. The wrong side lies the back to the rough side of the interfacing. And I would go ahead and iron it. After doing that, I would cut it out, okay? So I have ironed my interfacing to reads. And you can see what I have here, okay? So this is how to go about it. So you just iron your interfacing and you trim it. You just trim it out, okay? So I'll cut my wording for padding it, okay? So to pad it, I'm using a medium weight wording, okay? And this is how I have arranged it. This is the reason why you need to notch your boss point. So I've matched it up boss point to boss point, and I want it to get to a little bit under the, um, under boss, okay? So this is how it's going to lay. So let me just take it down a little bit. Just has to be under the under busts. Okay, so this is okay. So I'll go ahead and just cut it out. So let me separate it a little bit. So I'm marking it. So it's it will get to for the upper part of it like one inch from the neck line okay like one inch so that is where it will get to so that will be a guide for me so like so okay like so so i'll just trace what i have so this one as well we go under here and to not get to the armhole. So this side is okay. And the seam allowance as well. I'll take it off and so it's just okay like this. So I'll just go ahead and connect it, okay? So remember I notched the I marked the okay it's not so it's not showing because my camera is very bright so let me use marker okay so this I have the boss points so what I'll simply do is just match it up okay So I'll just match it up to the boss point. And this is how it looks at the back. Okay, so I'll use this one to cut for the other piece. So let me cut out for the center piece. So for the center piece, this is the boss point. 
So the, the reason I'm marking it is to use it to match it to the fabric, okay? So you just match it up at the side like so, okay? And you have this for the side. You can see what we have for this side, okay? So I'll use this one to cut for the other one. So I have this feasible side, okay? I'll place it feasible side to feasible side. Now cut. So now let's arrange it. Feasible side. Go this way and this one come this way okay so this is how I go about to pad it I can as well reduce it from this side because I don't want by the time I stitch my sleeve I don't want it getting to red so I can actually reduce it from this side so you can actually go this way just give it whatever shape you like, okay? You can see what I have there. And this one. So this is okay for me. So this is how I go ahead to pad it. And to pad it, I would pin it down. So I usually do this. Pin it down, boss point to bust point. So I've made several videos on how to pad your bustiers. So I'll just drop the links in the description box. So I'll just match it up bust point to bust point like so. So I'll match it all the way down. So when stitching, the side panel should be on top. When you're stitching okay the side panel should be on top just match it up and you stitch then when you come to this other side the side panel should be on top as well when you're stitching so all you need to do is just match it up and you stitch okay so after matching it up with my pin like so i'll go ahead and stitch okay so remember I said when stitching, the side panel should be on top. Like for this one now, I would have, since I've um, matched it up, I will just start stitching from the top to the lower part. Why on this other side? For the side panel to be on top while I'm stitching, I'll have to start stitching from the lower, um, from the lower side, okay? So that is why it is important to match it up with your pin so that everything would be at the right side. Um, place starting with your boss point you match make sure ma your boss point is matching up then you can as well stitch you know so you make sure your boss point is matching up you match up everything then you stitch from this side to the top so i'll go ahead and do just that and we'll see what we have so i've sewn it and uh, this is what we have okay and on the other side, this is it. So I've not notched it. I would notch it and give it a good press. So just notch. And most importantly, this under bust, you need to notch it so that it would open up and relax at this side so it should relax here so I just notch it so after notching it now I'll place it on my ironing ball I'll open it up and iron it now 
ironed you can see so i'll go ahead and do same for this side so after ironing this is what we we'll have okay so this is our shoulder dart boost here yeah? so now i'll sew the lining to it okay i've also stitched the lining so i'll do same to the lining i would notch it and iron it okay so i'll notch it and then iron it then sew it to the front like so then for the back there's one more thing that needs to be done that is the effect to eliminate zipper verge at the back so actually i'm supposed to do that while i was drafting it so what i'll do is just to get the waist point here that's for the back at the waist point i'll come in by one inch so this is to eliminate zipper budge so this is the waist point this part this area so i came in by one inch so from this one inch now i'll just connect it to the upper part and to the lower part as well so i'm doing that for the two let me place it very well okay so this is where i marked from that point i'll just connect to this and from there to this end as well So this is to eliminate the zipper bulge so i'll go ahead and cut it out so i'm cutting it out for the sake of this tutorial but in um, ordinarily so this is the effect you have to make to eliminate zipper bulge that is to relax well at the back so i'll go ahead and cut it out then go back to stitch the lining so just go this way. So this is the effect. So this is how it should be at the back, okay? So I'll close up the lining. And we'll have it this way. So you can see the space that we cut out. So by the time we are fixing our zipper, we we'll still take our one inch zipper allowance from every point of the back. From this point, you go in, but you take your one inch like that. So let me close up the lining. Let me stitch the lining. So I've joined the lining to it. So I stitched the neckline, the sides, and the lower parts. Okay, and this is it. So I'll turn it to the other side. And for the back, I've done all that need to be done on it except for the zipper okay so this is the back and uh, i've sewn the dart as well so all i need to do is just to give it a very good press so that is it for the back okay then we'll sew in our zipper so i'll turn the front from the armhole and give it a very good press as well now I'll join the back and the front. So to join the back and the front, I'll first of all, so I'll just take away what I need for my zipper. So let me mark my one inch zipper. So here it is. So I'll just make a very loose stitch because I'll still be losing it before joining the back to the front. So I've taken away the zipper allowance. So now I can join the back and the front. So 
So I'll start by joining at the shoulder. So what I'll simply do is just to sandwich it. That is, I'll take the back lining and flip it over to the front like so. Making sure that this side align. Just flip it over and align the edges. I'll make sure that all the edges are aligned. Then I will stitch by half inch. Remember the half inch for the shoulder seam allowance. So I will stitch by the half inch and that is it. So I will hold it down with my pin. So I will go ahead and stitch. I also do same for this other side. So after stitching it, I'll just cut this side a little bit so that it can be neat by the time we turn to the other side. And here it is. Okay, so I'll also turn this other one. Here it is. So now I would join the back and the front by the side. So I have stitched it by the side. So I've opened up the back so I can fix my zipper. So before I go ahead to fix the zipper, I'm going to stitch it up from the lower part. So I'm going to stitch at least one inch from here, then I'll fix my zipper. So I'll just turn it this way and stitch one inch from the lower part, then the zipper would be fixed. So I've sewn the one inch, so now I'll fix my zipper. I see how the mark I made when I close up the space for the zipper. So I'll just follow it. I'll place my zipper on it and I'll just follow the mark. So I'll pin it down, then go ahead to stitch. So the teeth of the zipper will be directly on the mark. So after pinning it, I'll go ahead and stitch it. So you can see that zipper effect you took. The effect is still there. So by the time I stitch it, we'll have it relaxing like this. So I'll go ahead and stitch. After stitching this side, I'll do the same thing to the other side. So I'll make sure I also pin the other side as well from inside. And I would stitch up the zipper as well. So let me do just that. So I've sewn the zipper and you can see this. So this is it about this blouse. I'll go ahead and cut the sleeve for it, but that will be in another video. And here is the blouse. So I made a sleeve for it, the trumpet sleeve and the wrapper skirt. So I'll be uploading videos on how I made the sleeve and how I made the wrapper skirt. So I hope this 
tutorial was helpful and i hope you like the video please give it a like and share with your friends if you haven't subscribed yet please hit on the subscribe button it is absolutely free it is for you to be part of this wonderful family and also turn on the bell beside it so that whenever i upload a new video you'll be among those that will be notified thank you so much for watching i would love to see you in my next video remain blessed